still not subscribed to the partition, you know, it's a lot of ways that you can do this besides watching all the content. But before we start, always remember, go to the channel's link. Every show that we have, you can always see every show before everybody else see the show. But besides that, always remember, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, put it on all. Until then, always remember, anything is possible. Thank you for choosing the partition. Now let's get into the show. Anything is possible. Peace. back to Chop It Up with LeRon today in the studio. I'm excited. I have another guest. This guest is a film director, producer, man. He's the king, king of films. I want you guys to welcome the one and only Mr. Juan C. I get it right? You got it right, man. That's that, you what know, I'm talking about. I've always gone by Juan C, but Juan C. Vasquez, you know, but I've branded the name and, uh, you know, hey, I can only be the best one. When you Google it, I'm there. Got you. Yeah, and you're right. You know, I, I I like getting directors and and people that produce movies and the king of what they actually do is what I like. I love to have people that come in like that. But what I do on the show, everybody that come on the show, I always tell them to kind of introduce themselves to my fans because my fans that may not know you are yeah, going to yeah, know you absolutely. and they're going to love you. Absolutely. So kind of give us a quick rundown who you are and we're going to go from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Juan C. Vasquez, uh, king of independent film. Writer, director, producer, actor. I do music. I record music. Um, you know, kind of a Jack Walsh trade. But the, the whole brand that, that I've created with films, is I've, I've written, directed, produced, and acted in five films all shot in Houston, Texas. Wow. You five know, films. Five man. films, yeah. yeah. If, if you don't mind me asking, so you said five. Um what was some of the the five films that that, that you were you, yeah the, the the first film was with uh was uh through the valley it had Danny Trejo in it mm -hmm. uh, machete hold he on cunt. the machete guy yeah 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 man I got a question I don't know why they didn't come back with M machete in space man I, I'm waiting on that one I mean the, the second one was so so man I, I liked it but it was like they were, you know when he needs he needs to get good writers like me man you know on, on that first one. They used a lot of the themes from my movie through the valley. Same lowrider club, same wow. you know the the, the political. It, it, it was crazy, man. But you know, um, I'll say that like that the the first machete had had a lot a lot yes. more to it. I like the second one because I'm a fan. So when you're a fan, yeah. you're kind of blind. You know, it did, you know it didn't do as well for for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, I, I when I first saw that. I saw the fake trailer. A lot of people don't know this. It was a fake trailer. I remember, trailer. yeah, yeah. Grindhouse. Yeah, you're right. And it had mm -hmm. that and the hobo with a shotgun. A lot of people don't know that. The hobo with a shotgun was in there and the machete. And then when I saw the machete come out and then I saw the machete kills, and I'm like, oh, wow, man, they own to something. And when yeah. they said it, they, they kind of lost me with the little Star Wars thing with the... With the knives, I was like, oh, okay. I don't know what problem. You know, I mean, again, it. it's it's writing, man. You know, I mean, it's each their own. I, I, I just, I had a, a blast working with Danny Trail. I, I was, you know, again, I, I was 28 years old directing this legend, and you're just like, yeah, oh, man, I wish I wish, I wish I had this brain back then. I would have mm -hmm. I would have made him do a couple more scenes, you know, just maximize a little more. Like, I was working with Robert Lazardo, another legend on, on my new film, The Squad. And, mm -hmm. man, Rob, you know, you don't know somebody till you work with them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he's he's a different person in a different place. But we did, we when, he, when we talked and he agreed to do it, first of all, shout out to Tyler Gallant. So Tyler Gallant is the next Bruce Willis. He's in, he's in my film. He's, he's the truth, man. Like he's, he's, he's a guy, he's up and coming. But, you know, 
when I saw him, like, you're a star, man. Like, I yeah. know. I got, I grabbed him. He got on the phone with Rob. I sent it, and he's like, you're Rob, you want to do it? So they just, boom, I got two, two just great stars just like that. Wow. Just me on the phone, you know, because I got, I got, you know, that kind of, you know, respect and, 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 and um, uh, friendship with these dudes that, mm -hmm. they, that they take my calls on and, and we can do something like that. And it just, like, the squad, I knew this was my best fun is, is the squad because I'm just, at my maturity levels as a director mm -hmm. on this one is their comfortability. Uh, shout out to Kenny Match Chop Ruiz. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Kenny stayed with me every day during and the filming. You, and you know, the squad, what I did like when I was getting a little quick little thing is based on some stuff out of Houston. Based on a true story. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, when I heard the story, I couldn't believe that, you know, these so-called Latino leaders and Latino artists, Chicano artists in the city, Hadn't wanted to power. grab grab this because they, you know the stories that they want to grab and do it. And that's not me, man. Like this was power right here because these dudes were were impacting the system. You know, you can't fight the system from outside of it. You know? That's right. You know that that's just we, we've tried, we've lost. We, that's right. You know that this is how it works. You know, so you have it. It it's it slow gains, but it's some gains. You know, mm -hmm. versus no gains and or getting you know your your uh, legacy wiped out or just not getting nothing done. That's correct. So at, at this time, uh, Detroit nineteen it was nineteen seventy nine. Houston and Detroit went back and forth for the murder capital of the world. That's correct. It was. It was like really, really, really bad, man. That's and, back when. And, and, and ironically enough, my man, right now we're back neck and neck. Go figure. Yep. It's you know, getting real bad. It, it, it's it time. You know, they say, what, it's a history repeats itself. It repeats itself. It's repeating itself right now. So I'm so happy that I, I pulled the trigger on this movie because a lot of people are going to catch on to, you know, know the, 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 the technology and the things that are going, to, going on with us out here. Mm -hmm. You know, so 1979. Houston has, you know, all these murders. I want to say it was like 700-something. 300 are Spanish speakers who, you know, they don't speak any English, just got here, and the white detectives and maybe a couple of black detectives, they ain't solving the cases. That's right. Because they don't speak Spanish. They're not going to go in those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Well, these guys, they, they, they called them the Chicano Squad. They got five of them. They started with them. Mm -hmm. And Lee Brown, who became mayor of Houston. I remember Lee Brown. He was the police chief at the time. He put together this, this squad and the mayor, who was the first female mayor, remember Houston had the female mayor, I forget her yep. name, but you know, it's crazy times, man, crazy times. And so you got all these people with these, you know, minorities, women power, here comes the Chicano squad, you know, and it's like this, man, you're, you don't know what it's like to be them, we don't know what it's like, you know, so right. I, so I just, I just say, hey, let me just give you the world as mm -hmm. they knew it, based upon what I've studied, because I hadn't done so much research for a movie since my first film. Wow. And your first film, when you actually did that particular film, was that your breakthrough film? That's the one that made you say, hey, look, this is the one that I'm going to actually do. It it, it, it it got me notarized real quick, and, and, and it made it like, oh, you know, this guy is talented. This guy can do it. Uh, but then, you know, the, the, the doubters say, well, where's the money? The doubters say, where's your next project? And you realize that it's a battle to be an artist. And, and you know, it, a lot of people that's in film, and I hear this from a lot of people, some people that comes out and make a lot of films have to always deal with people coming in that always ask questions like, hey, if I'm going to come be in your film, how much you going to pay me? Am I going to get paid y for Yeah, it? you know what? And it's a good question if you deserve it. You know, if you don't, you know, it's like this. Hey, you, know, you understand this is a business. And, and sometimes, you know, when you have no value, what, what business do you have in the business? You see? Mm -hmm. And and if you want to get in the business, you got to put in work. That's right. So it's a, different, it's a different mentality, you know. So, you know, uh, my first film, Through the Valley, that that took a long time to get there. You know, I don't come for money. I, I didn't. I just know no filmmakers in my family. You know, I wanted to do this, and this was a, a long path to get to that moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm on film five since then. But one of my mentors was the first Mexican-American filmmaker, Efrain Gutierrez. And, uh, wow. You know, yeah. So you know him personally? Yeah, she stayed at his house, you know, him and his, my, his son and me, we've been friends forever, you know, so it, I, it's it been crazy, yeah, the, the, the journey's been a lot of fun, you know, and, and I can tell you, I met him working on um, his last film, his last real feature film that he did, which was... Uh, it was like a few years back. Oh, man, this was like, you know, I was, I was a baby back then, man. Um, you know... And, well, almost like a century. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago, bro, but we, you know, um, 90s, you know, I was I was in college and shit, working on a film and I got invited by Jesse Borrego from Blood and Blada, you know, Crucito. I remember that movie. The one they throw on the fire hydrant, the good yes. looking, you know, him. Yeah, yeah. He he 
he he met me in college and he, he took a liking. He goes, man, you need to come work on this film with us. And so I went down there. I drove a thousand miles. Wow. With no money guaranteed. No place to stay to go work with this legend. Wow. Okay. And I got there. We didn't even have a place to stay. Luckily, one of the actors in the film let me crash in, in, in his room. So me and my boy, we were crashing in his room. Lo and behold, it's the director's son's room. He comes back from partying with SPM, you know. So all this, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how, yeah. House dope House. Yeah. Shout you know, out to Dope House. Records, shout out Dope man. House. Hey, and, and uh, so Dope House came through. And then, like, Filero jumped in on it. He did great. Um, you know, the, 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 the people from Dope House, you know, really participated as much as they could in, in, in the squad, which was great. You know, I really appreciated that. But, um, you know, so he gets back. Kid Frost was in it. It was crazy, man. It's just back to that, that, that story. And at mm -hmm. the end of the week, you know, he had some money, and I saw how hard it was for him struggling to pay all the bills and everything, but he saw how much I busted my ass for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he goes, listen, man, you know, I want to give you some money. You mm -hmm. know, he's trying to give me money. I said, no, man, you keep it. I said, right. May maybe on the next one you can pay me. That's right, bartering. And he took me under his wing. I ended up running his marketing for him, getting him booked at colleges, and, you know, I, I learned the game. I learned the game. I, I learned when he got his first film distributed, I saw the I knew the deal. You know, I, I learned, you know, can, can I cuss on here? Man, you, man we're going to beep it out. I, you say you're good. I, I, you know, I, le I learned on your first film, you're going to get fucked. You, 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 people you know, get fucked all the time. You're going to get fucked. So you, you better make sure, you know, you, you know what's coming. So you, it's not, it's nothing like that's going to kill you or, or make you distraught. But, you know, this this game's a monster, man. It, it's, right. You know, it, it's, the, the entertainment's worse than the drug game, and, bro. And you, I can tell you, man. A lot of people don't know this entertainment, especially with movies, can make you or break you. You got some people that's designed... Some people can't take criticism. Right. You can they can act like they're they're a good actor because they do these little short films or they do these little small gig roles or they do these little plays. But when you get yeah. in front of that camera and you got to remember that that script and you got to know how to say it, it's a whole different ball game. And oh, some yeah. people they do not understand that this movie that you actually have was it real difficult getting all the actors to come together. And being in the process of, of getting it ready to put out. Every film was different. You know, I got five. So you get up. So yes, yeah, so my first one is Through the Valley with Danny Trail. My second one is uh, the murder book serial killer Squad Two, which will be released later on after the Squad One, which is the new one. Uh, and then I did Trap Plane, which is a series. That one won Best Drama in New York. And that one, like, really kind of like we we like we were believers mm -hmm. after that. When we won Best Drama in New York, man. Colin McGregor was fighting. Dave Chappelle was hosting SNL. Uh, Trump had just won. People were protesting like crazy. New York was on fire, man. And we had this film festival going on. And we ended up winning Best Drama. Wow. And, you know, me and um, some other people are going to get together. And I'm actually going to design and come up with my own film festival for Houston. I want to do I want to call it the Cato Film Festival. And I want to get with a whole bunch of top directors, and we're going to put some stuff together, and we're going to have our own film festival right here in Houston, man. I think that'll be, like, a real good thing to have because, you know, Houston, we have, but we really don't have a lot. People kind of overlook us sometimes, and when we do cut through all the meat and grime, man, when they see us, they be like, wow, man, y'all been there? Man, there, been there there's so much talent here. That's just why I've been able to do five films here, you know. Um, it, 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 it's wild, man. You know, I, I, I came here, and I was just like, Wow, like this is there, there's something here, you know. I got no family. I don't know what God brought me here. I, you know, mm -hmm. now I got a son here that keeps me here, you know. But it's, it's it, I've I've had a lot of fun with it, man. Like I, I tell you what, like, there's so many talented people, so many good people, go getters, and you know, it. I would say this, man. Houston goes through phases. When I first got here, it was a it was a love city, man, and I yep. and I, I I love that body, and we're starting to get back to that. Just kicking everybody out that has a, a different mentality other than mm -hmm. that because it, it's not it's not us, man. It's, that, that that's what got that's what made Houston blow up. Yep, that's right. You know, you know, he said I'm I'm I'm, I'm born in the '80s, and I tell my kids all the time when when I came up in the eight so my best times was in my life was in my '80s and and in my late '90s. When we got to the 2000s, it's like it, it just changed. Yeah, man, you know what? Yeah, it was it was a horrible time after 9/11. Like they there's 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 marks. Of how they've stopped our progress. 9/11 mm -hmm. stopped a lot of progress, and, 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 and you know what they did at that time? Mm -hmm. We were making a lot of money, money in the music industry. 
We had CDs, you know, DVDs, man. That's almost now, the time now, when Napster came in, you, you, you know, we, uh, you know, you was an artist back then. That that CD, you were Master P, uh, you making eight dollars off it. If you were Wu Tang Clan, you making two three dollars off it. Yeah, you know, if you got a bad deal, you are making six cents off it. But it was big money being made. That was, you know, you you could have done it right. Mm-hmm. Napster comes in, they devalue our product. That's what mm-hmm. they do. What you're doing, you're putting all of your stuff in a cloud. Okay, Mm -hmm. you got no physical copies left. Something happens, you've been erased, and they Mm -hmm. own your masters. They reset you. They have they put somebody else singing your music. Watch. And I tell people all the time, it was nothing like the era of the cassette and the the compact disc. So and and they finna do that with DVDs. DVDs is gone. Blu-rays is here, and then everything. Blu-rays are are are, you know on the last leg. I mean you know I I mean I. We we didn't make a Blu-ray for the last last couple of years. You know, everything went right. You know, to Amazon, and you know, I can I can tell you, man, it. I was the first one doing it again, and I watched everybody copy me again, man. And and it was just like if you would have came and asked me, I'd have told you how it worked. Mm-hmm. But no, you think you're smarter than me? You go you go hit your head, buddy. Yep, because you know Netflix messed that up for everybody. Netflix is Next, so bad, Netflix, man. It, actually, Netflix to me is like another form of Napster. They came in. Actually, they came in in the beginning. It, and approached it, it, Blockbuster it, it, Video. They said no. And I know Blockbuster kicking themselves in the back now. I wish they would have. Well, you know, did man, that. we hear those stories, but we're not there. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, man, we weren't there. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the, the thing is, um, Blockbuster was a victim of n- not just um, the, the streaming wars that were coming and that the economic crisis of mm-hmm. 2008 going into 2009, mm-hmm. another point of destruction and the next real one was this this pandemic which is just you know crippled our industry again yep you're right you know okay now we come to the segment which we call leon's top five leon was a cousin of mine they got killed in in an 18 wheeler and i always dedicate this segment to leon what would be your Leon's top five? It can be an R&B artist. It can be gospel. It can be rap. It can be anything that you want. What would be your top five? So you, you want my top five people? Top five music artists. Oh, music artists. Oh, okay, okay. Man, okay, so I'm just going to go error by error, you know. Um, In terms of like. It can be rap, R&B, gospel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jazz, oh, okay. Blues. Man, that's that's a tough one because I, I I jam so much music for so many different reasons, you know, and uh, I'm I'm a big '90s music fan. You can okay. tell because you know, but with my music, you know, drug war veteran music. Look us up, DWV music. But you know, with my music, I try to have a positive message. I like blues. I like rock. Mm. I like you know, I like instruments. So you know, like my my top five is gonna be way different, you know. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I go from classic rock to uh, you know to Big L, you know to to, Big L from New York. Yeah, yeah. Big L was one of my major influences because he just had this flow that was just like so razor sharp, ferocious. I was listening to Deadly you Combination know? the other day with him and Tupac. Yeah, I mean, and you know, it's all so unfortunate how he got killed. You know, was, you know, right outside his stoop there in, in Harlem, and again, you know, you kill Big L. There's just so many guys. There's no, there's no Cameron. There's none of those guys coming. Mm-hmm. You know, might have been a Jay Z without you know, because Big L would have been occupying that top position for for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the same same thing. Pimp C, like I have a massive love for Pimp C's music because he he just had a unique style to himself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so you know, you like who's you know my my top five. You know, they're up there. I I, I love Big Pun because he's my he's my favorite Latino artist of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that's gonna he's gonna make my top five. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, and then, um, you know, you could talk like classic rock. I listen to a lot of Zeppelin. Um, you know, I, I do like just like real classic rock. And then, um, you know, on, on the R&B, man, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm a soulful guy. I've always, you know, just kind of, kind of grown up on, um, you know, just like, like I would say, man, I was there when you, that transition of, you know, that was it. That disco movement was going into like mm-hmm. the new edition, and you just you go into the Belle Bid DeVos. I, I loved that era, man. Yes, that, that that's just like an, another favorite era era for me. So, you know, um, I would put I put I mean, 
Man, I remember, you know, singing Bobby Brown, my prerogative. I just, you know, he had that attitude, he had the voice, he had the, he had the look, yes. everything. Yeah, but Bobby yeah. Brown was something else, man. I, I, I still listen to We're On Our Own. I still listen to, to, to Tenderoni. Man, the, 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 them guys, man, music, they don't make it like they used to. What they have now is is, is not the actual same. It's, it's totally different, but, you know, everybody era is different because I know when we was coming up, our parents at times didn't like our era of music. They felt like, oh no, um the the Johnny Taylors that, that came up, they loved, they loved the Ray Charles, they loved all the other stuff that came after that. Now, how can the people find you on social media? Yeah, so um the squad, you you can check out the trailer for the squad at um you got that's E U G O T. It stands for entertainment you gotta have. And so you got, we have, you got films, we got, you got music. So where you got, uh, film and music, you know, we're indie, we're basically an indie channel. And that's mm -hmm. what I've been pushing. I got three albums coming out with Debbie music. Oh, wow. First one's called passport to extort. We got five singles out right now. Okay. The new one's going to have ESG on it. And that's dropping, uh, I want to say next month. I want to drop that album. It's called passport to extort D DWV music, drug war veteran music. And that's because I was born in the drug war era. The war on the war on drugs was the war on blacks and Latinos. That's what I was born into. Okay. You know, so I tell you, I was enlisted at birth. Got you, got you, got you. you know. and, and do you have an Instagram too? I do. You got films. E U G O T films. Okay. And then on uh, Facebook, just Juan C Vasquez, J U A N C, and then Vasquez V A Z Q U E Z. Okay. I enjoyed you on the show, and I will have you back later on on another episode. Until next time, always remember, anything is possible. Thank you for choosing Chopping Up with Lil Ron. Until next time, we out. Peace.